scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. <laughs> is the president of Eternity Network International, a Christian-based organization headquartered in Abuja, Nigeria. He's the set man of the weekly service called Koinonia. Widely known for his sincere love and passion for the body of Christ, his meetings are characterized by great and unusual presence and moves of the Holy Spirit, miracles, healings, signs and wonders, workings of miracles and deliverances. Apostle Selman is a carrier of the strange presence and power of the Holy Spirit. The teachings of Apostle Selman are timely, anointed and balanced. They have become a major tool for revival in the lives of individuals and ministries in many nations of the world. With a standing ovation, help me welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you give Jesus the loudest shout you can give tonight? The loudest shout, the shout of joy, the shout of victory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I promise you, I promise you that will not stay later than necessary. This is a promise tonight. Amen. Um, but then, let me just do something very quickly. While I sat there, I had a vision. And I saw someone using a crutch or a walking aid or something. I want you to lift it up now and walk. <laughs> lift it up now. If you came with that... Lift it up. Walk. Come. Shaba kosa leko sabranda gadeva la kushia. I just saw this. Please, don't put them under pressure. I release the power of God. The moment a miracle has happened there, let them come forward. Just lift it in the name of Jesus. I release you to walk now. I release you to walk. There's a miracle happening there. Are you celebrating Jesus? Let her come. Clear the way for her, please. Walk. Kenya, are you celebrating miracles? Awesome God. How great thou art, you alone, mighty are your miracles, standing on of your holy name, Lord we bow and worship you, my dear. 
how long has this been how long have you used this don't cry since April what happened to you look at me you believe in the power of God oh yes walk go Jesus. thank you Jesus thank you Jesus lift it up give me the crutch madam lift it up lift it up that devil is a liar there's another miracle here lift it up madam look at me lift it up walk go how long has this been eh? madam seven months what happened to you I fell down listen when miracles happen like this they are a message from God it's more than just a testament that a man is anointed if all you see is an anointed man you are not seeing well it's important for you to see a God in heaven who is writing something through these miracles <laughs> madam look at me give me your crutch now go walk as fast as you can look at this look at this hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now the Lord is showing me someone your is it your right ear your right ear you've not been able to hear in the name of Jesus wherever you are I decree and declare by that name that name that has been exalted as Lord and Christ let that ear be open now let that ear be open now let that ear be open now in fact you'll be seated shortly but there's someone is it your left eye you're not able to see wherever you are in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead let there be a miracle for you right now in the name of Jesus let's celebrate these people return with your miracles to the glory of the name of the Lord hallelujah the Lord is showing me a young lady there's something wrong with your shoulder you were not able to lift it up properly I think there's some pain I don't know if it's a dislocation or some pain if there's such a person here I want you to lift it up right now by faith check yourself let me just honor this vision that I've seen check yourself if there's a miracle run quickly and I want you to come to the front something has happened right now check yourself check yourself you find out there's a miracle I want to see you in front right now. Kenya, is this how you celebrate miracles? Look at this. Young lady, don't cry. What happened to you? Give her the mic. What happened to you? Something that me had been moving in my leg and then it came to my arm. The same thing happened to you? Lift it up. Let me see. You too? You couldn't lift it? How long? For the last six months. You couldn't lift it up? No. What happened? I don't know. The pain just started on my, on my, on my muscle. Then it went back to my shoulder. Look at I this. my hand. Oh, glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crown. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me someone, I don't know, it's like you have a problem with your nostrils. Please, um, um, let, just, just follow as I just lead you. If I don't call your case, I curse that devil right now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, you could not smell something was wrong with your nostril. A miracle just happened to you now. 
a supernatural miracle check yourself and run out right now a miracle just happened right now mm, my god madam i cause this spirit i stretch my hands and i decree and declare be released from this oppression i don't know you but in jesus name i rebuke that devil right now look at me my sister check yourself do what you couldn't do before gone gone ah what are you turning to wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you hold on please hallelujah now the lord is showing me a woman don't feel embarrassed i will pray for you wherever you are this woman you have suffered what we know to be the issue of blood for a long time this has plagued you right now as i'm praying for you here at rema fest by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus let your fountain be dried up this moment let it be dried up this moment let it be dried up this moment let it be dried up this moment in the name of jesus for all of you who have received miracles we may not have time to allow you to testify but let me stretch my hands and pray for you there's one of you right now the power of god is coming on you very strong such a mighty anointing that is coming upon you and the lord is saying he's opening every door that has been closed i decree and declare as god is speaking to them he's speaking to kenya every door that has been closed in the name of jesus we decree and declare a father be open be open be open in the name of jesus now i decree and declare over all of you in front these miracles that you have received in the name of Jesus, they remain perfected in your bodies in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. What's this? Oh dear, he's trusting God. For Don't worry, my friend. Huh? I want you to release your faith as I pray for people later in the service. I'm just trying to walk with time. I'm hearing a name. You can imagine that in a crowd like this, there'll be so many people with that name, but I'm hearing a name, Mildred, Mildred. And the Lord is telling me that I should tell Mildred that your season has come, that God is bringing a visitation. I don't know who Mildred is, but in the name that is above all names, I decree as the Lord has spoken, we decree and declare that all that needs to be in alignment for this season to profit you, may the Lord make it happen for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's your name, my dear? What's her name? Mildred. Don't worry if we have to take people one on one, we'll take all the time. But in the name of Jesus, let me use you as a point of contact and then speak to every other Mildred, every other person. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, we declare that this is your season indeed. Receive that grace and that anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. What a powerful time with Minister Dunsin. Let's give him a big God bless you one more time. Hallelujah. Reverend Julian, thank you. Thank you. Honor you and I celebrate our Father. And every man and every woman of God, my goodness, I hope I'll be able to preach. I have a few minutes, but now that the waters have been stirred, do me a favor, please. I want you to be your brother's keeper. If for any reason someone is under the anointing close to you, um, there are so many people, tens of thousands of people, and so you cannot expect the ushers to do justice in terms of reaching everyone to attend to them. So please, whoever is under the anointing close to you becomes your business for the night. Hallelujah. You would help to nurse them, protect them. If then I request that you bring them out, especially for those who are within close range, please, I would um, request that you do so. Hallelujah. I'm saying that because of the prayer I want to pray now. Um, there are a few people 
that God is reigniting prophetic wells. There, there is a dimension of grace that you once accessed, but for whatever reason, through laxity and carelessness, you seem to have lost it. And now the Lord is saying, I will restore. I'm hearing in my spirit, I will restore. I stretch my hands. Let that grace, let that oil in the name of Jesus, a fresh baptism upon you once again. A fresh baptism upon your ministry, upon your life. Just help them once again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please help that man. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you light. Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you light. I'm seeing a man of God. You are a man of God. You are seated somewhere in front here. And the Lord is saying what you saw in your dream. He's about to make it come to pass. You saw an impartation happen. A meeting looking like this. And an impartation came upon you. You are there, right there. Bring that man out for me, please, very quickly. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare. Let that grace, as you saw it in the dream, may it be made manifest this moment. A pastor where I'm an apostle where in Nairobi Nairobi here but I'm from Uganda you're from Uganda yes sir can I pray for you yes sir I'm stretching my hands upon you but the power of God is touching a different person I don't know what mystery this is now hallelujah I'm stretching my hands but the person I'm seeing in the spirit is not even out here he's still in the crowd I just saw like fire rest upon one man just somewhere here I wanted to bring that person out that man in front bring him out there is a pastor am i wasting your time just just give me a few minutes to do my thing in this place sir listen you see when god anoints a man he expects that that anointing be extended to as many people I told you that the days of superstar Christianity is over. Where the emphasis becomes on people, Apostle Joshua Selman. No, we are here to project and to reveal Jesus Christ. Are we together? In as much as we are privileged vessels that are being used by him, I will emphasize again for your understanding that the real person who is deserving of praise and worship is not Joshua Selman, it's not Reverend Julian, is the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to reintroduce this orientation to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Sir, please stand. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you. Um, in the name that is above all names, I pray. What do you do, my friend? You're a man of God? Yes. I you do, do business too? Yes, I also do business. Yes, because I'm seeing a man of God doing both ministry and doing business. And I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, let it be a new season for you. Grace, the wisdom of God, I impart it, receive it now. It will come upon you and I decree and declare that God will turn your life and your ministry around. And sir, this man, I stretch my hand. Let grace come upon you. You will walk signs and wonders in a way that will marvel you. I release that unction upon you in the name of Jesus. There are two women intercessors. I see a very strange anointing coming upon you. You two women intercessors. God is fanning the flames of your prayer ministry. Two women intercessors. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are. But after the order of Anna the prophetess, may that grace, that grace rest upon you. Please help them so they don't expose themselves. Two women intercessors in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree this by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let your ministry step into a new level. In the name of Jesus. Madam, look at me. 
in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands let grace be released upon you right now grace be released upon you you will never be the same she's an intercessor you believe in that ministry shout Jesus as loud as you can hallelujah my god please be seated please be seated i didn't even greet you good evening everybody may the lord bless you in the name of jesus a man of god will start running please hold him and bring him here literally he will start running please hold him and bring him so he does not in no i'm not talking about this man literally start running I want you to hold him and bring him and I will tell you what grace is coming upon him. Literally start running. This is not by his, by the flesh. It's happening by the spirit of the living God. And I want you, <laughs> please don't carry just anybody under the anointing and bring them out. <laughs> Looks like we're doing a, a burial here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, let's, let's get back to the word. Let's get back to the word. We began, we began a very prophetic discussion in the afternoon. And I'll just touch a bit on that because of the time. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So, I did tell us that there was a way and there is a way that God designed that men would know him. That you are not given the liberty to invent your own personal formula to knowing God. There is already a predefined path. Are we together? God expects believers and his people to know him, to learn him, but that there is a predefined path. And if you walk in keeping with that path, you will know God in such a way and a manner that translates to a victorious and a profitable Christian life. And then I told us that biblically speaking, there are four platforms. Four platforms. Don't worry about those shouting under the anointing. Let me just have your attention. There are four platforms. Kelas kema shubraki kasubriata. I'm hearing the sounds of chains in my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that yoke of bondage, those chains over your life and over your destiny, that they are broken now. Hallelujah. The first way that we know God is through scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation. I did teach us that the second way we learn God is by a meticulous study of his names. That the names of God are a capture of the various dimensions of his power and his ability number three i told us that we know god by studying the person jesus remember that jesus came as a revelation of the father the bible calls him god incarnate that he wore a mortal body he became flesh and i did tell you that jesus came to fulfill three principal assignments number one he came as a correction of our understanding as far as the knowledge of God were concerned that until Jesus showed up there were many things that we thought God was that after he showed up from the lens of his person we got to know that the propositions that came from the patriarchs and the prophets because they saw like we all see in parts they also prophesied in parts that until Jesus came there was no possibility for a personal relationship with Jesus. 
there were a few people who based on the election of grace were called into a level of intimacy with God like we see Abraham we see Moses but there was no widespread possibility for an intimate relationship with God until Jesus died and resurrected now through the ministry of the Holy Spirit everybody can have a personal relationship with God are we together so that Jesus came as a correction of our understanding our prior understanding until that time about God number two he came to reconcile us to the father number three he came as a pattern man to reveal to us God's expectation for the believer hallelujah and then I told us that from an evangelical and an apostolic dimension there are three revelations of Jesus you must have to live a victorious life an excelling life number one you must know Jesus as Savior that's where we stopped number two you must know Jesus as Lord number three you must know Jesus as Christ if you are bankrupt of this threefold revelation you will never be effective as a man of God, as a businessman, as a witness, even as a territory. Hallelujah. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any. It says, for there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. The revelation of Jesus Christ brings us into a consciousness of his love, his ability to forgive, his substitutionary sacrifice. We read 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4 earlier on that chronicles very intelligently the entire subject of salvation. It is important that in your pursuit of Jesus, the first part of call is to know him as Savior. The advantage of knowing Jesus as Savior is that you become a bona fide recipient of eternal life. The Bible says this is the record that God had given us eternal life but that that life was so structured that until you encounter the Son, you cannot have the life. That means you cannot receive the life of God by proxy. It, there, is a, there is a requirement that you must know him personally. John 17, 3. This is eternal life, Jesus said, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent hallelujah so we must know Jesus as Savior number two very quickly is the revelation of Jesus as Lord I'll take it from there now it is important for us to know Jesus as Lord to know Jesus as Lord means to understand the extent of his dominion and the extent of his influence the moment you begin to talk of the lordship of jesus it attempts to describe the extent of his dominion and the extent of his influence this is where bible faith is framed from the revelation of the lordship of jesus you will never be able to do much for the kingdom until you know jesus as lord psalm 24 and verse 1 says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the walls and they that dwell therein there's no time but you need to understand that this right here is the description of dominion that if you will ever walk in dominion in this kingdom these four components must be captured in your life number one land the earth number two the fullness the resources of the earth number three you must have access the ability to influence the mind and the thinking of a civilization and then number four you must have influence over men the earth the fullness the world and then the inhabitants that dwell therein the bible says it belongs to the lord it belongs to the Lord the revelation of Jesus as Lord brings you to a point where you are aware 
of the riches of his dominion and power and grace fear dies when you know the Lord because then you can believe God for anything. If he tells you as a man of God, or if he tells you in Rema first, that by next year you will be in your own facility, you see, when you have to be aware of who is talking to see the power that is invested in what he's saying. The character of God is that he never speaks until he has the power to defend what he says. So whatever you see God say is because the power to make it happen is also there. Genesis 21 from verse 1. The Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. He only visits as he has said and he only does as he had spoken. The revelation of Jesus as Lord is very profound. In fact, Paul, in mentoring the church in Philippi, had this to say, Philippians chapter 2. When you read from verse 5, he says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Then jump to verse 10 for sake of time. The Bible says, Wherefore, verse 9, now let's look at verse 9. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him, and given him a name, an office, that is above every other office. Next verse. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Say amen. amen. Of things in heaven, of things in the earth, and of things under the earth. I like 11. And every tongue should confess that that Jesus, who is also the Christ, has now been enthroned as Lord. The revelation of Jesus as Lord is what plants the spirit of faith in every believer. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them. Not just Jesus walking with them. The owner of the earth. The one who is able to manipulate all things to become consistent with his will. Most people do not know Jesus as Lord. That is the reason why they live in fear. You see. And most men do not know God as Lord. That is why they are proud. When you are aware that Jesus is Lord, you will not only respect that office, but you will be cautious when you begin to speak like God over people. I will ensure you do not rise. It's because you do not know the Lord. The psalmist said, I slept, I lay me down and I slept. He said, I wait for the Lord sustain me. Every man is sustained by the Lord. You have to get a revelation of Jesus as Lord. The result of that, like I said earlier, is that number one, Bible faith, the baptism of the spirit of faith will rest upon you and you can believe God for impossible things. But number two, when you know him as Lord, it brings you to a point where you become surrendered and you become obedient. Here's what Jesus had to say. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and will not do or obey the things that I say? That means for you to acknowledge him as Lord, it's, it will take beyond confession. Confession and believing in your heart is all it takes to enjoy that dimension of him as savior. But when you come to the Lord, he demands loyalty. When you come to the Lord, he demands obedience. Hallelujah. Because that Lord is also king. Most people rebel against God and his purposes and his will because they do not know him as Lord. All things happen because of him all things consist because of him the earth belongs to him the kingdom come project belongs to him even the holy spirit is called the lord of the harvest the harvest belongs to him everything that in this kingdom in truth there are no owners everybody met everything they have here the real owner is the lord we call people landlords, we call people all kinds of lords, and that is fine. But the real Lord, and every once in a while, he comes into the world of men to remind us that he is Lord. He will do something that only he can do. 
and remind us we see the frailty of claiming lordship I am Lord, I'm the landlord, I'm this and that. Then something happens in your life that you are totally out of control of. And then the Lord comes in and brings stability to your life to remind you that I am not only Savior, I am Lord. There are many of you here, you've got the revelation of Jesus as Savior. But the reason why your Christian experience is barren is because you do not yet know him as Lord. When you know him as Lord, you will know that there is nothing, absolutely nothing that he cannot do. Man of God, when you stand on that crusade ground, you need to know him as Lord. Otherwise, you will be disappointed a thousand times. The centurion got it and he said, I am a man under authority. I have servants under me. That means I know what it means to be Lord in a measure. I say to one, go and he goeth. I say to another, come and he cometh. Jesus, I know that you are under the governance of the Father. Speak the word only. And Jesus said, I've not found such faith. No, not in Israel. In other words, who gave you this orientation? The Lord. The Lord. Every time life tries to probe into who sent you tell them the Lord strong and mighty because there are gates that stand around the destinies of men and would not open lift up your heads O ye gates he says and be ye lifted O ye ancient doors you thought the gates and doors would say all right we've heard you they said no who is this king of glory I like the reply the Lord strong and mighty the Lord the owner mighty in battle I'm able to believe God for anything for my life for the work he has committed and for the assignment he has given because I know that the one who sent me is not just Savior he is Lord we start by revealing Savior but we do not stop at revealing Savior we must reveal the Lord to the nations. It is the revelation of his lordship that will humble the kings of the earth. That will bring systems and structures to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Every time you saw kings humbled in the Bible. It was because the Lord arose in majesty. And in his jealousy he brought them down to a position where they were forced to acknowledge that there was a God in Israel from Pharaoh to Nebuchadnezzar to Darius to Herod you name them our world is full of men and women who made boastful claims attempting to claim property men estate land and then the Lord arises and in the name of Jesus tonight I'm praying for someone. Let the Lord God of heaven arise for your sake. Arise and judge everything that has attempted to mock him in your life. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Jesus as Lord. When you know him as Lord, you will live a surrendered life. This is really the revelation of consecration. You may have heard me teach that what we call consecration has a twofold approach. Number one, it means abstinence from. Number two, it means devotion unto. Consecration does not stop at abstinence from. It also means devotion unto. So you are not just consecrated to the degree to which you obtain grace to abstain from. You must also obtain grace to be devoted to the Lord. Devoted to the Lord. Wherever he says go, you go because the Lord has sent you. And you trust, listen, you trust his power, his grace. You trust his authority and his influence. You trust his will for your life. And you can relinquish your ambitions and everything you have to follow the blueprint he has for you because he's Lord. Most people fight walking in the will of God 
because of pride and because of fear they have not come to a point where they recognize that this jesus i know he walked upon the earth as starting from a baby in a manger to a teenager and then to one who gave himself freely and because of how cheap jesus died sometimes we mistaken somehow in our minds we still look at him as a weak one who just died out of love john the baptist or John the beloved now saw him at the cross but now when he was banished to the Isle of Patmos he saw the same one but he, now this time around he did not just see the Savior alone he also saw the Lord enthroned as King and John was amazed you mean this was the same person who walked upon the earth and died so cheaply with the ability and the power to manipulate all things to be consistent with his will may you have a revelation of jesus as lord yeah. and bible faith is stirred off within you god will tell you i want you to build a twenty thousand capacity in nairobi and the first thing is to vet who has sent me and he says the lord when i sent you lackest thou anything when you see people walk like madmen until their results vindicate them is because they've had an encounter of jesus as Lord if it be thou bid me come that was not the Savior speaking that was Lord and he said come and he began to walk on water the church that must stand in glory and reveal Christ to the nations must have a revelation of Jesus as Lord man of God you need to know Jesus as Lord otherwise the bills will strangle you push you towards the corridors of compromise and reduce your Christian experience to an embarrassing sight you need to know him as Lord the end time bailout strategy for all believers and that includes men and women of God is to stay with the spirit until we have a revelation of Jesus as Lord then we can speak to the nations we can step into nations with godlike confidence even though we're humans because we know that as frail and limited as we are we have the backing of the Lord hallelujah ordinary men did extraordinary things in scripture because they understood that the Lord was walking with them confirming the words with signs following in the name of Jesus, let fear, fear of the future, fear of excelling in ministry or otherwise, fear of tomorrow, let it die permanently this night. Let me remind you, Kenya, let me remind you people of God that Jesus was not elected to sit where he was sitting. He got there by conquest. Are we together? There is no threat to his position. He remains there eternally the Lord forever. Isaiah in the year that King Uzziah died read your Bible I Isaiah he did not see the Savior he saw the Lord high and lifted up when you see the Savior you see him hanging on the cross you see him as a lamb that was slain when you see the Savior you see love you see kindness you see care but when you see the Lord, you see authority and dominion, control and power, unperturbed by the pride of men. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. He was high and lifted. And the Bible says the train of his robe filled the temple. When Isaiah saw the worship, the dexterity of the throne, Isaiah fell and said, Woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. Something always happens when you see the Lord. It is not just the awareness of his might and dominion and power and influence. Something must die from within you. Self dies when you see the Lord. Your ambitions die when you see the Lord. And the prophet said, woe is me, I am undone. A man of unclean lips and I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. He says, for my eyes have seen the king. And then the Bible says, one of the seraphs took a live coal and touched his tongue and said, your iniquity is now taken away from you. Then there was a call in heaven. 
who shall we send and who shall go for us and Isaiah the prophet said here am I send me send me it is the Lord who sends men send me to Kenya send me to South Africa send me to Zimbabwe and if they ask you who sent you tell them it's beyond the governor it's beyond the president it's beyond an ambassador the Lord sent me hmm. most people are not conscious of the fact that they have been sent by the Lord we do the things that we do and we get the results that we get not just because of who we are but who we know we know the Lord we have taken time by the privilege of God's grace to know the Lord he says finally brethren Ephesians 6 10 be strong in the Lord the consciousness of the Lord I like amplified it says draw your strength from your union with him be empowered through the consciousness of your union I have become joined to the Lord I can fail alone but me and the Lord cannot fail together if I'm to sojourn alone in ministry and in life and destiny, I give you a guarantee alone. I'm already a failure even before the journey would start. But not when the Lord walks with me and the Lord walking with them. By this revelation, the Lord is pruning away weakness and all kinds of excuses that has stopped the church from rising to become a bride with power. Be conscious of the fact that you have the backing of the Lord. Let me give you number three. And then we end for tonight. The third revelation that must be at work in any believer who wants to become a portrait of true apostolic Christianity is that you must know Jesus as the Christ. Please join with me. Two, three minutes. Let me tie this up. And then we will pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Matthew chapter 11, please, from verse 1 to 5. Please follow this scripture carefully. And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Reading to 5. Now, when John had heard, watch this now, in the prison, the works of Christ. The works of Christ. Christ he sent two of his disciples three and he said unto him art thou the one who should come or do we look for another in fact other versions like new international version even amplified I believe says are you the Messiah are you the Messiah who should come or should we expect another verse 4 Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John the things that you do here and see. What are the things? The blind. Watch this. <laughs> when it has to do with Jesus as the Christ, he talks about the works of Christ. And John was offended because the Messiah, the anointed one, based on the revelation that he had he being john now was supposed to come and manifest great things including releasing him from this bondage and he was locked up in the prison and in offense he sent his disciples he said listen even though i ordained you into ministry i'm in doubt as to whether or not you are anointed now are you the one to come or should we expect another our expectations have been disappointed and jesus said go and tell john what you see Let's go to verse 5. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. What kind of an answer is this? He said, you just go back and tell John. Don't tell him. You tell him that when you came to that crusade ground to ask me that question, this is what you saw. The blind saw. The lame walked, the lepers were cleansed, the deaf hearing, the dead raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them. 
And then he said, verse 6, if you care to read, blessed is he whosoever that shall not be offended in me. The word Christ is the Greek expression of the Hebrew Messiah. They all mean the anointed one. Hallelujah. So when you call him Christ, comes from the Greek word Christos. It means the anointed one, smeared with the anointing, authorized to be a demonstration of all that makes God, God. That is what it means to be the anointed one. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So that you have a revelation of Jesus as Savior, understanding his love, his forgiveness, his substitutionary sacrifice, his desire to see all men saved, which to the revelation of Jesus as Lord, the master, owner, absolute manipulator of all things according to the will of the Father. But then he says, for your effective witness, you will need to know Jesus as the Christ, the anointed one. Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one. Let me show you two scriptures and then we'll tie it up for the night. Is God helping someone? Pray in the spirit in one minute whilst you are seated. Go ahead and pray. Just a minute investing in the spirit. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 16, please. Please give it to us. Matthew 16, 16. Now, this, theologically speaking, as you know, it was in this discourse that the word church was first mentioned. Hallelujah. In the New Testament. Jesus began this discussion by clearing the air as to this identity crisis. He started by saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of God, am? And some said, you are Elijah, you are one of the prophets. And then he says, but who do you say that I am? And they were all silent. Then Peter, speaking by the Spirit, answered and said, Thou art Christ. He never called him Savior. He never called him Lord. This is my testament of who you are in light of all that I have seen. Thou art Christ the son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Now watch this, 18. And I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this revelation of my being Christ, you have found a revelation, and that upon that revelation, I will build my church and it will be so formidable if it is built on that revelation such that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I hope you know that Jesus Christ is not just like a name and a surname as we know. Joshua Selman. So you say Jesus Christ. Christ was not another name. It was a description it was a badge of attestation that this one who was the word incarnate named as a Jew, Jesus, that he had now become Christ. This was Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost. He says, let it be known to you, O Israel, that this same Jesus whom you have crucified has now been exalted as Lord and Christ. He uses all the three expressions, crucified as Savior, exalted as Lord and as Christ. When you talk about Jesus being the Christ, the anointed, then you now have to understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit and it brings you into the dynamics of the anointing. Did you know for a long time when Jesus began to mentor the disciples who would later become the apostles, he seldom spoke about power and anointing. But according to John's synoptic account, that discourse about the Holy Spirit and then the anointing officially started in John 14, then 15, then 16. He began to introduce them to this personality called the Spirit. 
He said, but the comforter whom the father will send in my name, that he will come, he will be in you and be with you. I have many things to tell you, he said, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, that he will guide you into all truth. He will take the, that which is of me and he will show you things to come. Jesus began to show them the dynamics of the spirit and even of the anointing. And in Luke's synoptic account, he said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. That Christ dimension must be captured in your life. For 30 years, Jesus walked upon the earth as an ordinary human being, unable to do anything, even though he was the son of God. But the Bible tells us that after 30, he went and met John at the Jordan to be baptized of him. And when he came out of the water, the Bible says the heavens were open and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in the similitude of a dove. And there was a, an accreditation that came from the Father himself. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Then the Bible says that he went according to Mark chapter, Matthew chapter 4 and he was in the wilderness praying and fasting for 40 days. And then when he was done being tempted of the devil, he says he returned in the power of the spirit. It was at that point he became Christ. And everywhere he went, he didn't have to say, I am the Christ. He showed that he was the Christ. When it has to do with the Christ, the anointing, it answers to demonstration, not just the excellency of speech. Please listen. There is a generation that proposes to know Christ and the world is tired of our talking because when it has to do with Savior, you can speak. When it has to do with Lord, you can speak and then we also see through your loyalty. But when you reveal him as Christ, there are works that attest to the fact that Christ is Christ indeed and Christ is at work in your life. It was Charles and Francis Hunter who said one genuine miracle is worth a thousand sermons, I believe. Our generation is bankrupt of the manifestation that attests to the fact that Jesus is indeed the Christ. It is the reason why the world has seen the church as a nuisance to civilization. Every time they see us worship, they see us pray, they see us teach, they see us converge like this. They just believe that these are a group of fanatics with no destiny no sense of vision is because there is need for the revelation of Christ hallelujah by the time someone leaves his home a crippled person and returns back walking dragging his own wheelchair or his own crutch that is the revelation of the Christ anointed to reveal the glory of the father don't just say god is kind show it the assignment of the christ is to bring evidence to all the speakings and the claims of god when you say god is mighty the christ is mandated to demonstrate that might when you say god heals the christ empowers you to make that healing manifest i made up my mind that i will never preach jesus as a lecture manual there has to be a demonstration of the living christ to my generation even this generation that seeks for a sign can i tell you respectfully speaking call laborers in the gospel if we do not import the realities of the christ life to demonstrate him here and now i hate to be a bearer of bad news but be prepared for empty pews we must transport god to a context that our world can relate with. Christ. Christ. I know who thou art. Thou art Christ. The son of the living God. Thou art Christ. And you demonstrate that he is Christ. And that you know him. It is impossible to know the Christ. And yet not carry the anointing that the Christ carried. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Peter was in the house of Cornelius. This would translate to the salvation of the Gentiles. And here's what he said. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He was first Jesus of Nazareth. The anointing took away of Nazareth and replaced it with Christ. Joshua Selman of Nigeria. The anointing can take away of Nigeria and add Joshua Selman, the anointed. 
he was born Jesus of Nazareth the anointing turned him to Jesus the Christ you can be a man of God of Nairobi Kenya but the anointing can edit your geographic limitation and place something upon you such that you be called the man of God the Christ he says and the kingdom till the kingdoms of this world uh, become the kingdoms of our God and of we his Christ the name Christ is not reserved to Jesus alone it's a generic expression that is applicable to everyone who has now been anointed by the Spirit who has become an extension of the possibilities of the kingdom when you say Joshua Selman the Christ of God that will sound like an error to this generation but in truth from an eternal standpoint you are right because his goal to, was to produce many sons many Christs replicated after his possibilities Christs in business Christs in ministry Christs in politics anointed with power commissioned with power Kali Karosiata, that you step into the business world not just as a man of God doing business with an anointing an unction from heaven with a singular mandate to bring creation in subjection to the Christ can we do one last verse for tonight Colossians 1 23 and 24 let me show you something and then we'll wrap up hmm. king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you. king of kings lord of lords faithful and true Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Listen, the Bible says, my goodness, Ephesians 2 and verse 10. It says, for we are his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should work in them. Do you know what this means? A man's workmanship means the tools that he uses to display his creativity. If you are a doctor, your workmanship is your stethoscope, your injection. If you are a carpenter, the hammer. So he says the believer is God's workmanship. That every time God needs to make a statement upon the earth, he looks for Dunsin, he looks for Reverend Julian, and he says, where are you? He finds a man of God in Kenya. I want to make a statement that I'm the healer. I want to make a statement that I live, that I bless, that I can impart men. We are his workmanship. Hear me? We are more than believers. It doesn't take much to be a believer, but it takes a lot to be his workmanship. Man of God, carry this mentality. I'm not just a man of God scrounging to do ministry. I have come as an evidence that God is alive. I have come as an evidence. My presence is to clear a point. There is something Satan is saying in Nairobi that has necessitated my manifestation. There is a statement that Satan is saying over lives, families, territories, and God sends you. You are my workmanship. Ephesians 3 10 I'm wrapping up 3 10 look at this scripture now to the intent that unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the ecclesia the church of God the multifaceted manifold manifold many-sided wisdom of God can I tell you it is in the revelation of Jesus the Christ 
that the wisdom of God is revealed in the saints now let's go to 1st Corinthians 1 23 24 never forget this scripture as we wrap up but we preach Christ the one who was crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greek it sounds like foolishness I like this but unto them which are called like Joshua Selman unto them which are called both Jews and Greek it says Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God take notes every time the anointing manifests there are two things you seek to see power and wisdom Africa has embraced power but we rejected wisdom that every time you fall under the anointing don't just be aware that power is the only thing you receive it must be power and wisdom to reveal the Christ completely it takes power to heal the sick but it takes wisdom to build nations and all of them are together a manifestation of the Christ can I tell you the church has rejected the wisdom that comes with the anointing and so there are poor and broke mediocre people fasting and praying day and night looking for power whereas there are things that the wisdom of God that when the anointing comes you need to discern what you receive just because you fell down does not mean it is power that came on you it may be the wisdom for the next 10 years of your life hear me speaking about wisdom he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me by me nobles rule that with me are riches wealth and honor yea, durable riches and righteousness the most powerful man on earth grew in wisdom when Jesus walked upon the earth the Bible does not say he grew in power power came later on but wisdom started when he was a child wisdom preceded power in the life of Jesus the value of the power that came upon him was because it came upon a mind that was wise can I tell you impartation of power is useless to a man that has rejected wisdom it will not do much mm -mm. it is the reason why we have impartation after impartation in church falling down rolling under the anointing there's nothing wrong with that but we get up power conscious but bankrupt of wisdom do you know that the entire plan of God was not just driven by power it was driven by the hidden wisdom of God is that in your Bible that the entire plan of redemption was shrouded in the wisdom of God even the hidden wisdom that the princes did not know they knew power can I tell you Kenya this nation is waiting to see the wisdom of the just. There is something called the wisdom of the just. That if you say you are a child of God and you have encountered the spirit of the living God, it must translate to a context of wisdom that dumbfounds principalities and powers. Wisdom is connected to mighty works. You cannot be mighty without an impartation of wisdom. Christ is revealed unto both Greeks and Gentiles as the power of God to wrought supernatural things but the wisdom of God to build territories to bring order and dexterity look what Solomon did to the Jerusalem temple look what Solomon did during his reign it was a manifestation of wisdom abundance of it Job was the greatest man in the east and he credited that to the manifestation of wisdom he says oh that I was in the days when the light of God his candle was upon my head there were two kinds of light one upon his head for illumination the other that one to direct his path as he walked that by his light I saw light there are entrepreneurs that need to rise demonstrating the wisdom of God not just from blind fanatism there are men of God who need to rise on one hand let, let, let's not look like foolish people who are just fanatic and have no relevance to our world so they relegate the man of God, opening prayer, closing prayer, every other discussion, you are not wise enough to comment on it. You just sit down with your fanatism and church while serious people who are building nation keep talking. God is rewriting that narrative. 
they were ordinary disciples who were not learned but the Bible says when they saw the wisdom the dexterity of wisdom and intelligence they said but these men were unlearned but then they saw that when they met the Christ they also became the Christ stop telling people you have met Jesus show people you have met him I don't care how many visions you say you have had that does not profit anyone until you show the excellency of what has come from that vision Solomon did not need, did need to say I had an encounter his wisdom two prostitutes brought children and they were arguing about something so delicate and he brought forth the wisdom of God Kenya we need to see Jesus revealed as Savior as Lord and as Christ one last time for tonight as Savior as Lord and as Christ let's do the final rehearsal Jesus as Savior as Lord and as Christ <laughs> hallelujah so when he comes as Christ we will heal the sick we will see to it that supernatural manifestations happen by the Spirit. But ladies and gentlemen, the world is calling for people who have the wisdom in the similitude of Daniel. Daniel was a prophet, but his prophecy was not what was striking about his life. It was the wisdom of the Spirit at work in him. O king, do not be hasty to punish everyone. Give us time. Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. Daniel was wise as wise they they said the wisdom of the gods was upon him how about Joseph there is a level of wisdom we need to bring wisdom that is not affordable as far as the world of men is concerned this proves that Christ the wisdom of God is at work in us can we hold hands as we wrap up tonight our time is fast spent we'll save the miracle service for tomorrow by the privilege of God's grace we'll have tomorrow will be an impartation service my session and it will be a time when by the grace of God God is going to be igniting fire we'll be having a time to pray we'll be having a time to minister to our needs especially for many who have traveled I was so touched by our Indian uh, Indian brethren who flew all the way you can imagine desiring to carry this fire everything God gives a man is transferable under certain conditions not every condition certain conditions hallelujah let's hold hands father visit Kenya let there be an outpouring of the spirit of the living God like never before is someone praying and then you can also pray for your nation wave the flag of your nation and declare prophetically we'll pray more on that tomorrow but I want you to decree and declare in the name of Jesus here at Rema Feast 2023, visit Kenya, raise mighty men and women who encounter Jesus as Savior, Jesus as Lord, and Jesus as Christ. Go ahead and pray. Just sow that seed of prayer in one minute. Mighty visitations upon your people. Let every church let every business, let the heads of government manifest and demonstrate the power of God and the wisdom of God, bringing territorial transformation, sinners coming to Jesus, believers established in wisdom. And that this land continues to go from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. Go ahead and pray. Christ. The power of God, Christ, the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, as you return back home tonight, let me beseech you and charge you by the message of God that you make it a project from tonight and all through the remaining sessions in this conference and even beyond that you'll take the time to meticulously listen again and pursue this light this light has destiny implication if and when you get it you know jesus as savior you will take your world by storm you will you will watch sinners come to jesus you know him as lord you will walk like a god upon the earth 
I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like mere men, he says, and fall like one of these princes, because you do not yet know him as Lord. The bankruptcy of yieldedness, our ambition that is out of point with divine alignment, is because we have not submitted to the Lord and even the King. And then we need to know him as Christ. Our world is in desperate need for a manifestation of the glory of God through the saints manifesting as the wisdom of God and the power of God we need to press for these these dual dimensions of the anointing that my life will be a revelation of the power of God to the nations but my life will also be a revelation of the wisdom of God to the nations let's end with a blessing in the name of Jesus I decree and declare standing upon the grace of our fathers and every man and woman of God here we stand under the corporate anointing and I speak over everyone here represented the many following online and even over the nation of Nairobi on Kenya in the name of Jesus beginning from tonight may you encounter Jesus the Savior beginning from tonight may you encounter Jesus the Lord and from tonight, may you encounter Jesus, the Christ of God. And in the name of Jesus, as a result of this encounter, may you be a savior to your generation. May you be Lord over principalities and powers. And you, may you be a manifestation of the Christ, even to the world. The Lord bless you tonight. You go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus a loud shout and a big hand clap. Can I, can I? Hallelujah. I'm so sorry. I just feel guilty. Please come, Reverend Julian. Could you let me a minute? My apologies. I failed to make the altar call in the afternoon and I felt so sad haven't preached on Jesus as Savior is it all right if you lend me one more minute to just make the altar call hallelujah an altar call is not a funeral service there's nothing to be embarrassed about sometimes you see people walk up to Jesus as though they feel cheated and lost in life uh, out of the tens of thousands of people here gathered and the many more following online haven't heard me preach I know by the Spirit of the Living God that someone needs Jesus tonight and in as much as our time is gone, we take your own destiny serious and we want to give you a minute. I'm going to count one to five. And for the many who are saying, Apostle, Reverend Julian, if you will allow me, I want to make Jesus Lord of my life or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. There's no point beating around. There's no point playing games with your destiny. Win this war once and for all. This is a matter of eternal priority. I'll count one to five by the Spirit. Wherever you are scattered from the back to the front, i like you to run boldly and come and stand right in front here. Are you ready? I begin my counting now. One. Kenya, let's celebrate them as they come to Jesus. Two. If you're coming from the back, please run. When I count five, I begin to pray. Come. Come. Let's celebrate them as they come. Three. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Please clear the way for those who are coming. If you are coming to make this call, please clear the way. Four, are you still running to Jesus? Hallelujah. Come, come. Apostle, will he accept me? In spite and despite all that has happened in my life, you are most welcome. As many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Now, I want to thank and salute all of you who have made this bold decision. Once the front is filled up, you may stand wherever you are. 
just participate in the prayer thank you for those of you who have had to come right from the back i know it's been quite a distance thank you please lift your right hand i'm standing here with reverend julian and we want to lead you to make this profound prayer the most important prayer that any man can make under the sun come to jesus now i want you to make this prayer sincerely from your heart you're not reciting a poem this is unto jesus the savior of your soul the lifter of your destiny the savior the lord and the christ shout this from the depth of your heart say lord jesus Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe in you as Savior, as Lord, and as Christ. And I declare that tonight, I receive you into my heart as Savior, as Lord, and as King. I declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i receive the life of god and i declare that i go forward from glory to glory amen keep your hands lifted and i pray for you father thank you for this blessed people i stand in faith with reverend julian here at rema feast 2023 and we thank you for these many who have come declaring your lordship over their lives by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and in the name of jesus i commend you to the ministry of the word and of the spirit i declare that you are grounded and established in righteousness you go from glory to glory and from grace to grace forward ever and backward never in jesus much less name we have prayed and the people said amen okay here's what you will do for me very quickly um for all of you only those who are in front please just for the sake of organization there are some pastors you see some counselors waving their hands i want all of you in concert just move to my left which will be your right and they'll have a word with you very very quickly and then you'll return back and you'll be ready to go home let's honor them as they go can you give them a big 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 god bless you Hallelujah. Pastor Pete. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.